Many players come to me wanting to learn how to play a one-hander backhand successfully. And what really attracts them to it is the technical component of the shot. It looks pretty. Um, many fans that are entering the sport started watching tennis because of Roger Federer who has an amazing one-hander backhand and technically uh, we can call it perfection. So what are some differences between a two-hander backhand and a one-hander backhand if you want to try it? One of the key factors is your contact point. Your contact point on a one-hander backhand is further out front of your body. And when we mean further out front, it's between you and the net. So the ball at contact is much further forward than on a two-hander backhand, which is closer because we do have that left arm associated to it as well. Having a contact out in front gives you full stability from the shoulder, elbow, hand. You have full support of the body and then the arm is supported by the chest as well. Out there. If you find yourself contacting the ball late, so to speak, or closer to your body, then there's very much weakness in the arm causing challenges. Now it causes you a challenge to swing through the ball if the ball is close here. Whereas you can see on a two-hander backhand, I can make contact closer to my body, no problem, because I do have that support of the left arm or my non-dominant arm. As far as the grip goes, on a one-hander backhand, given that that contact point is further out front of our body, I'm looking to put my knuckles of my hand on top, almost like a fist going forward, like you're trying to punch something. By going forward, in this location, you have, you have that ability to control the racket face for a higher contact, lower contact, dip the racket head, and create topspin. So if you're developing your one-hander backhand, this is a great exercise to do. It really helps. Now, and it's at any level, really. You can place the ball in that perfect location of contact, go sideways, my knuckles are on top, and I just roll the ball over. Now, as I do that, I'm rolling the ball. I'm brushing the ball, really, going low to high. Now, be careful of trying to do this with the racket face. We don't want that racket face to go from open to closed. We're not trying to roll this way. We're keeping the racket face angle straight stable and then we're rolling by going low to high this will teach you how to create topspin naturally on a ball now of course if you're a beginner and and just starting off the sport you would not be trying to attempt this uh, you can hold the racket more as a as a hammer grip and then just make it go flat over the net but you can still practice the same motion low to high the net is a perfect practice partner. It helps you create an ideal contact point while you're practicing your swing. Now, these types of exercises really focus on the technical component of, of playing. Um, so it does not take into account your movement, your reception of the ball. It just focuses on the sending of the ball. Now, you're noticing that my feet are sideways. As I am swinging through a backhand with one hand, what we are creating is a stable contact point and hitting zone through the shot itself by not allowing our legs to open up too soon. You will see players trying to hit a one-handed backhand and over-rotating their body early. What you notice the professional is doing is they swing through the ball and then as a result of the swing, like my hips are sideways, in a way my hips trigger the movement from the bottom up, and then they stop. They stop the motion while the chest then continues through. And as a result of that, pulling, then the other foot, the back foot comes around. If you're developing your one-handed back end, I wouldn't focus on that component as much. Really focus on your contact point, going low to high, from there, low to high so that you're creating an arc over the net. 
We're wanting to create that arc over that end and lift the ball upwards. So as you're practicing your one-hander backhand, if you're just dropping it down to yourself, make sure the ball leaves your racket going upwards, low to high, while your racket face is straight, like we just talked about it at the net. You can see that my feet lock in. They don't necessarily move much around. I'm tossing the ball to myself just in front of me. I create that balance and stability on the front foot where I could basically swing through a ball just standing on one foot. That allows me to really feel upright and allows me to swing low to high. If I'm moving my head and allowing my balance to be lost, all of a sudden I don't have as much control over my swing. Now you can do some shadow swinging as well for this. In, um, in any scenario where you're either filming yourself or in front of a mirror, where you're going low to high, swinging through, allow yourself to turn as much as you can with the upper body, as long as your hips are staying straight. And I can do some like this, where I stand on one leg. I basically completely balance myself on one, or the front foot in this case. Or you can even do the same with your left leg. Balance yourself on the back leg and swing through. So when the swing is occurring, I'm balanced, keep my head up. I like to think of it like I have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee on my head. Of course, my head is bold, so it's a little easier. If you have a lot of hair, it may smooch around. But what you're trying to do is create that feeling of balance and stability as you're swinging through it.